bring you a snapshot, if you will, of what it's like inside that bubble. Let me say hello to you and uh, to our guest, Dave Sanford, who's been covering the NHL for 27 seasons, but now working right now for, uh, let me just get this right, make sure I get the credentials for who you're shooting for with, Dave. <laughs> Uh, for the National Hockey League and their photo department, exactly. NHL Images. Exactly. I want an NHL Images. That was the word I'm looking for, working for them, capturing all of this in the bubble in Edmonton. Hello from outside. Good morning, Dave. Hi, Heather. Thank you so much for having me on. Well, we're all interested in what's happening in this uh, experiment, I guess. How has it been going so far? So far, so good. Uh, been some long days, but um, I... I really like everything that I've seen so far. Um, it's it's a place where uh, I feel uh, my my anxiety levels have dropped significantly since you know before coming in the bubble. Really, you were concerned. You you were. Yeah, and I mean, you know, there's a lot of moving parts to this, and um, and as we got closer to it, and I received our protocols and whatnot, it started to put me at ease. And then arriving here and seeing how um, everything is in place, like they virtually seem to have thought of everything. And um, as was on there just before with the good doctor saying, um, as long as everybody adheres to what we have to do to make this be a success, um, I, I think that we have a very good chance of pulling this off. Excellent, we'll hope for that. Devin really did set things up and he showed us what it looks like inside the hotels because because you're working with the NHL you're in the inside and in one of the two hotels there can you just give us a little bit of, of what it looks like and what how the players are living and and what sort of the routine is shaping up to be um, yeah it's I mean it's definitely different it's it's got an Olympic vibe to it in a way um, I've done a couple of Olympic games and with the fencing and you know the zones that we you know are allowed to go into um, versus where we are not allowed to go, obviously, it's it's got that kind of same vibe, but on a much smaller scale. And um, it is kind of strange to see all the players kind of together in one area, especially given we're coming into a playoff time. Um, to see players from different clubs uh, mixing and mingling with one another out in the in the common area. Uh, it's it's definitely something different to see at this time of the year in hockey. We're looking at pictures because they've, as as Devin was reporting, they've made the floors look like sort of team headquarters, which they're going to be for the foreseeable future. No families, no fan interaction. That's right. That is correct. Um, no families, no fans, or anything. It's just uh, if if you're here, you have a working function, whether it's playing on the on the ice or working behind the scenes for the clubs or the or the league um so yeah it's it's all business for sure all business and potentially for two teams anyway until october yeah absolutely that's what we hope <laughs> <laughs> um yeah it, and and it, it's kind of crazy to think here yeah we're here in edmonton with 12 teams and in just a matter of days a few of those teams are going to be going home and um, we're going to be into the playoffs, and yeah, there's a Stanley Cup at the end of all this. It's it's serious business for the guys. But that is a long haul for some of the players, and for the Oilers and the Leafs in the other hub city, they too are staying in the hotel. They're not staying at home during this whole time. What are what are the players? What are you hearing from from the players themselves about yours? You seem to be, as you said, your concerns allayed, and you're you're thinking things are off to a good start. But what are you hearing from them so far? That's the same kind of uh, sentiment I've heard from the guys that, that I've spoken with. Uh, everybody seems really impressed by everything. Um, and there is that, you know, sort of sense of safety, which is good. You need to have that feeling. But again, you can't be complacent about it. You've got to be diligent about in how you conduct yourself and, and you know, wearing the masks and washing your hands and keeping distance whenever possible. All of those things matter. You can't just throw those out the window because we're inside this bubble. We still have to adhere to all these, you know, health and safety regulations to keep everybody safe. So, um, but it's nice to have that feeling of being able to look around and see how amazing, uh, you know, the amazing operation that, that this is with all the staff and, and people behind the scenes. Um, it's nice to have that feeling um, where your anxiety levels have, have dropped and you can concentrate on your job at hand. And for me, that happens to be taking photos.
and, and their job, of course, to play. What did you think of how the early games yes. went? Very different scenario. <laughs> very different. Fan-free, very different vibe, I'm sure. What was your impression of the game itself? Um, well, I, I was saying afterwards, that's the highest level of energy that I've ever seen at an exhibition game at the NHL level. <laughs> um, even though there was no fans in the stands, the, you know, the, the guys are at a different level, at, you know, right now. Um, they're, they're, you know, this isn't the start of the season. This is the start of the playoffs. So there was a bit more intensity out there for sure. And it's definitely different without the fans in the stands. Um, but in all honesty, for myself at times, a lot of the time I try to block that, you know, that ambient noise out and I'm concentrating on what I have to do. So in some ways it sort of feels the same. But when you sit back and you look around and you're like, I see, you know, one cameraman here and maybe one over there and, and that's about it. It's empty <laughs> and it's a bizarre feeling for sure. Isn't that interesting? How else is it affecting how you actually go about your job photographing all of this? Uh, it's definitely added more of a, like a photojournalism element to it um, because this isn't just about the hockey. This is, there's a, a worldwide pandemic going on and we're here playing under these, you know, unique circumstances. It's never been done before and hopefully never again. Uh, so we're also trying to show that as well of, of what life is like inside the bubble and document this from a historical point of view. Bring, we're going to bring in the pick that you have said to us so far is, is your favorite. I'm going to, I haven't seen it yet, Dave, so let's look at it together. Thumbs up. There you are. Tell me about who's in this picture here. Uh, I, I can't see it. Okay. <laughs> um, is it there three is, of us in there? There's three. You're in a black okay. ball cap, and yep. there are okay. two people so I can't be... recognize in the masks. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, that would be my boss, Kara Bradley, uh, with NHL Images, uh -huh. and uh, she's overseas photography, um, event photography with the NHL. And then we have Andy Devlin, who's the Edmonton Oilers team photographer, who I'm working with. You're all um, in this. So the... We are, and our editors um, are remotely operating out of Los Angeles and their homes there. Uh, we have two editors that are working for us, and then we have two shooters that are also in Toronto uh, working this as, as well. So, uh, exactly. And there's only eight photographers in total. There's four of us for the NHL, then there's, there are two others in the building here in Edmonton, which they're relegated to the upper bowl, which is not part of the bubble. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's the same situation in Toronto. So I'm very honored and privileged to be one of the very few here to uh, have the opportunity to photograph this and bring the pictures to the to the rest of the and world. And to live this experience. And we'll look forward to your, your photos as these days and weeks carry on. Just before I let you go, I'm interested in the talk there among the hockey players and the hockey organizations about what's happening in baseball. Living a very different experience, they opted not to go this bubble route, and now we're seeing what's happening with the Marlins and the Phillies and other teams potentially too. Whether there's talk about what baseball is seeing and maybe the comparison. Um, I haven't talked to any of the players about that. I've talked to uh, some of the support staff for a couple of the teams, and um, it's we all kind of I think feel the same way it's it's how is that possible to pull that off when you're traveling like that um in comparison it seems like we're in a very good situation here um it's you know I I hope that baseball um can stay healthy and and pull it off but it's it's a monumental task I think to be traveling around all over the place in a, in a time like this um, but I wish them obviously nothing but the best and, and good health for everybody. Mm -hmm. Well, we saw the players arrive with their great big pillows. They're set to hunker down maybe for weeks and weeks to come, Dave. So we'll touch back with you as we uh, find out how this goes. Hopefully there have been no positive cases after thousands of tests and may that continue. We'll be back in touch. Thanks, Dave Sanford. Thank you, Heather. Inside the bubble.